Hello and welcome to my channel Crafting with Shutter Monkey. I'm Amanda, also known as Shutter Monkey, and I live in Ayrshire on the west coast of Scotland with my husband and my cat. This is episode number 33 and today is Friday the 10th of November. It has been just over two weeks since I last filmed an episode and I have four knitting items to show you. One update in my crochet and an update to my patchwork and quilting project and I've got some acquisitions to show you too. So let's just jump straight into the knitting section and the first thing I have to show you is a finished object and it is my leaf cardigan. Isn't it awesome? Oh God, I'll stand up and give you a wee twirl, okay? Doesn't it look amazing? I am so pleased with this cardigan and how it turned out. Um, I have used an advent calendar to knit this from Beehive Yarns. Um, it was the A Year at the Cabin and it was the 2022 advent calendar. And I bought it this year. I didn't have it over advent season last year. I bought it this year and I bought it in instalments. It was released in four different instalments so you could buy the spring, the summer, the autumn and the winter. This is spring. This is summer. This is autumn and this is winter. And the pattern that I used is the Leith Cardigan by the Crea Bear. I just love it. I enjoyed every minute in it in this cardigan and I'm so pleased with how it turned out. Now because I had spring and summer on one side of my cardigan, I've got an autumn winter sleeve here. And it's autumn winter on this side so it's got the spring summer sleeve. And I have got 14 rows of each colour. So if it's the if it's the advent colour or if it's the cream colour, it's 14 rows. My tension was a little bit off. Um, I think it's 20 stitches to an inch and my tension was 21 and a half. I knitted the fifth size, but it's a wee bit smaller than it should be. It's maybe a wee bit neater than I wanted it to be, but I didn't want a big, a big baggy cardigan because with it being a super wash wheel, I think it'll all grow a wee bit anyway. Try and keep my hair out of the way so you can see my cardigan. Um, oh, I just love it. What changes did I make to this pattern? I have actually used the knit cast off on my shoulders. I didn't graft it. I just wanted a wee bit more stability along the, the shoulder seam here. I wasn't sure, sure how much the shoulder would drop down and I just wanted a wee bit more stability there. So it's the knit cast off on the shoulders to join the back to the fronts. I didn't do the double knit button band. I have picked up all my stitches all the way around and I've knit the button band out the way. I do have quite a lot of buttons on it. I've, I have 10 buttons on my cardigan. I wanted more buttons on my cardigan because I feel that if you, once you start to spread it a wee bit around the middle, if you sit down, sometimes your cardigan starts to gape open and I didn't want that happening. So I've got plenty of buttons on it to stop any, any gaping. <laughs> um, I think the pattern only has four or five. I think I went a wee bit overboard, but it won't be going anywhere, will it? The sleeves have got six rows of each colour. I wanted 12, 12 repeats of each colour on here so I could get half an advent on each sleeve. So it's slightly thinner stripes on my sleeve and I am just delighted with it. I can't believe I've actually got a finished garment and I've even woven in all the ends. Even along that intarsia bit at the back, I've woven all my ends in as well. So pleased with it. I didn't finish it until yesterday morning. This is Friday the 10th and it was Thursday morning before I finished it. I was supposed to video yesterday and try and show you this, but my husband was working from home and he was um, on 
either video conference calls or he was just on regular phone calls chatting to people all day long. It was one of those days where there was a lot of meetings and a lot of phone calls. And I thought, I can't get videoing while he's chatting in the background. So I had to wait until today. The sewing up took me a lot longer than I thought it would. I always underestimate how long the sewing's going to take up. I had budgeted Monday and Tuesday to do my sewing up and I needed a wee bit of Thursday morning to finish it off as well. This sleeve here, don't ask me why, it took me hours to sew that sleeve up. I got the sleeve head in okay and it was mattress stitching this seam up here. See, trying to get those stripes to match. They just kept jumping out and there was more unpicking than there was mattress stitching. And in the end, my, my yarn started to fray and snap as well. Oh, it wasn't easy. And it took me hours to do that one. The side seam was okay, but it was just grafting that under the sleeve. And I was really dreading doing the second sleeve, but that went no bother. That's just the way it sometimes, isn't it? But I am so pleased with it now that it's done. And I think I'm going to get so much wear out of this. Oh, the pattern doesn't tell you to... You have to leave seams for sewing up. The way the pattern is laid out, you do the back and the front pieces all in one go, right up to the armholes. I chose not to do that because it would mean I would have four colours in the go at one time. Um, but it's only two colours if you follow the pattern and you don't have to have a seam here. And then when you do the sleeves, you are supposed to pick the sleeves up around the armhole and knit them down the way in the round. I chose to do them flat just because I didn't want all my cardigan lying in my lap and then my cat would come and sit with me as well and before I even wore the cardigan it would be all pooked and covered in cat hair. I just I chose to knit it all flat and it, it kind of gave me a wee bit more grief at the end but the knitting part was lovely and I did get to knit on it lots and snuggle with my cat so that's what matters and it's done now and even the ends are in. I just love it. I 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 love it. <laughs> finish cardigan. <laughs> that is a big finish for me and I am absolutely delighted with it. I couldn't be any more happy. I have used just over maybe half of my advent calendar and I've started another project with the leftovers. It is somewhere between 8 and 12 grams that I've used of each colour. It just depends where the stripes are falling. Um, if a stripe is here at the top of the, the front or the back, there's slightly less yarn than that. But the sleeves made quite a big difference. If it's a stripe down here as opposed to up there, it's a lot less wool. Um, and it, it's just great for an advent project. This was the double knitting cardigan. The, sorry, this was the double knitting advent. And I just love it. The cream coloured yarn was Rowan Pure Wool double knitting and I bought it in Wool Warehouse it was reduced to three pounds a ball and I bought ten of them and I've only used five I have added extra length to the cardigan as well because I am five foot ten um I need a wee bit extra length on it so I think I've got on the original cardigan there is only five coloured stripes I've got six so it worked great for the advent calendar but I couldn't be happier with it I am just so so pleased with it um, and now that I've finished it, I'm going to look out my Lace and Fade Boxy by Hoagie Locatelli. I finished weaving in the ends in this yesterday and I did look that out yesterday afternoon and spent a wee bit of time on it, just timing myself to see how long I, I could do it, it would take me to do a round. So I'm really, really hoping to have the Lace and Fade Boxy finished soon as well, maybe even before the end of this month. And then it leaves December free for um, Christmas knitting. I don't have any Christmas gift knitting that I'm going to do, but I would like to work on some of my Christmas theme jam and my advent projects. Right, will we move on to something else now? I maybe have to take a wee five minutes to calm down. <laughs> Just seeing this cardigan on the screen has got me has get me all giddy. <laughs> right, let's move on. I'll talk about what I'm using for the, the leftovers from this cardigan. But it's great as an advent project. I think as well, if I had made this card, I could have made another one of these cardigans from this advent. I could, have, I could have knitted it in a smaller size. I'm just thinking if I was to knit in a smaller size to fit my daughter, I think I would have had enough yarn to do two cardigans. With those 10 balls of cream and the double knitting advent, I really, really think I could have got two cardigans. So that would be great for an advent calendar, wouldn't it? If you could get two garments from it. 
Anyway, the leftovers that I had, I've started knitting a cowl. And this is how it is looking so far. Just need to make sure I don't drop it. So I have just started colour number 11. So this is the spring colours down here. One, two, three, four, five. That's the spring and this is the start of summer. And I'm just going to keep going, knitting in a tube. Knitting in the round, I should say, until I've used all the colours. Now that's quite a good length so far and I'm only on colour, I've just started colour 11. So it should be able to go right round your neck with a wee bit, a wee bit of room there. That's how that one's looking so far. I'm using 4mm needles because that's what I used for my cardigan. I probably should have said that in the cardigan section. But um, I cast on 96 stitches. I did um and ah a wee bit about how wide to make this. And I did look at other people's projects if they'd, done, if they'd knitted a double knitting cowl. Um, and some people were casting on maybe just over 100, 120. Some people were casting on 80. And I couldn't decide what to do. So in the end up, I cast on 96 stitches because that is the year my daughter was born and it's probably going to go to her. So, that's it. That hasn't taken me long to do that. You can, I can actually do that and not even look at it. I can just knit this while I'm watching the TV. So it's perfect just for... when you it's Just see at the end of the day when you've been really quite stressed out, got a lot on, you just want a bit of mindless knitting. Keep your hands busy. It's great. So I think I'll have this finished if I video in two weeks' time. This will be done. It would look actually really good on with this cardigan, wouldn't it? All matchy-matchy. So hopefully next time that, that will be finished. And it's just 4mm needles, knit on the round, 96 stitches. And I'm not counting my rows. I'm just knitting till a colour runs out and then joining in the new one. So easy peasy. Oh, I did use a provisional cast on for the bottom. If you think the bottom looks a wee bit tight, it's, it is. I actually used a wee bit of scrap yarn from my cardigan and I didn't have a lot of scrap yarn from the cardigan because most of it was used up in the sewn up or else sewn on buttons. And I used a wee length that I had and I just used a, I think it was a three and a half millimetre crochet hook and I chained to the 96 stitches and I just had enough you can see it here. I just did enough to do my 96 stitches. But then I started knitting into the back of the, the crochet chain. And it was quite tight. I was struggling to get it all the way around my, my circular needle. It won't matter. I'll take it off just maybe a day or two before I'm ready to graft it. And I'll put it onto another circular needle and give it a wee bit of time to breathe for a day or two before I graft it together. But the bottom does look a wee bit tight. And it is just because that crochet cast on is tight. I should have used a bigger hook. But if I used a bigger hook, I wouldn't have had enough of that cream yarn. So, really pleased with that project as well. The next knitting thing that I have to show you is the sock. And it's the, the sock from Ammo Yarns that I bought while I was in Perth. And it is the... The colourway is actually called the Scottish Yarn Festival. And here it is. It's lovely, isn't it? Really like it. That's me get one sock done now. I've still got the other one to do. I haven't even cast it on yet. And I really need to get it done. I would like it done before the end of this month. I'm trying to clear the projects that I've got before December comes around and I want to be knitting an advent projects. Because as we know, I have got a lot of whips and I really need to finish some of them. So that is how this one is looking. And I used 2.25mm needles for this and it is my Scoosh toe up pattern and all I've done is the, it's a knit, knit 6 purl 2 rib every second row just to give it that wee bit of texture to it. But it's lovely. My youngest grandson saw this, he actually saw a ball of wool, I was knitting a cardigan for his baby sister, I'm going to show you that next. And he's like, oh, that's, that's quite nice. And then he saw this and he went, oh, that's so cool. So I wonder if there's any leftovers. Could I maybe knit something for him? Even a wee pair of mittens or something. If there's, I've used about 40 grams for this sock. So I would maybe have about 20 grams left over. And he's only tiny, he's only four. So I need to think of something that I can make for him with this because he did think it was cool. 
There we go. Right. And the last knitting project that I have to show you today, I'll try and keep my hair out the way today so you can see my beautiful cardigan, okay? Um, the last knitting thing that I have to show you today is a little cardigan that I've made for my baby granddaughter. Now, I knitted this one a couple of months ago. This was part of a competition that I was judging and I knitted this little cardigan here and it is knit using the Baby Twinkle from James C. Brett. This is all I've got left from two balls, so there's not much left. And this colourway is shade BT02. And the pattern that I use to knit those little cardigans is this one. It's by Stylecraft and it's their Wondersoft DK and it's pattern number 8117. Um, when I did this cardigan here, it was a smaller size and there's just no way that this is going to fit Amara. She's only six months old, but this is a, a 16 inch cardigan and it finishes at 18. And I took it around and I showed this to her mum and her mum liked it. And I said, well, look, I think I've got enough yarn to do it in a bigger size. So I did a bigger size. She needed, I measured her chest circumference and she's got a 21 inch chest circumference. And that was a couple of weeks ago. So she was only just just over five and a half months. I need to get this cardigan to her. She's going to have outgrown it if I don't hurry up. So that's the bigger one. This one will fit Amara. And that was just over a ball of wool this one took. I had a full ball left over because I bought two. The first one didn't take a full ball. But I did have to use part of the leftovers for this one. It's such a lovely little cardigan pattern, but it's the it's the difference in size that look how much bigger it is. Even the length of the sleeves. This girl is just growing so fast. It is unbelievable how big she is. She's, she's, she eats well, she sleeps well, she's such a happy, contented little thing, so she is, and so can't complain. She's outgrown a lot of your clothes. Um, there was little dresses that I bought last year when we found out that it, she was going to be a little girl, and I bought a couple of Christmas dresses for her, and I bought six to nine months, and there was a couple, there was one that I bought, it was three to six months, because you're never quite sure whether they're going to be big or whether they're going to be small. And it was like, well, I know she's going to be roughly at Christmas. She will be about seven months old, seven to eight months old. And none of it's going to fit her. It's all still brand new with the tags on. So uh, none of it's going to fit her. She's, at, she's in nine to 12 months just now. And I would not be surprised if come Christmas time, she was in 12 to 18. She is just she's such a happy, happy, contented, smiley wee thing. So she is. But I need to go, now that I've shown this to you, I need to go take it round to mum and dad because if I leave it too long, she's going to outgrow it. And that is all the knitting that I've got to show you today. Sorry, I'm still looking at my cardigan, isn't it awesome? <laughs> um, that's all the knitting that I've got to show you today. So let's move on to the crochet section. And I've only got one project to show you. And it's just a little update on my current crochet project. And here she is. My little toft Statue of Liberty doll. And her wee eyes aren't too bad. They're better than solid black eyes. These have, I think it's worked out better than solid black. The last time I showed you her, she only had her body and I think I was maybe a bit up to her chin. So I've got her head finished. I've done both of her hands, uh, sorry, both of her arms and her hands and her feet. Now the unique thing about this dolly is that she has toes. Um, usually the toft dolls just have just have feet and um, there's no toe shaping but this one does. She's got little toes. I wonder if you can see if I show you that way. Those toes were hard going. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm quite a tight crocheter and I stick to the size recommended by Toft. It's a 3mm hook and I'm using the 3mm Etimo, the red one. They're my favourite crochet hooks. I do like those. 
and I don't know if maybe I should come up a needle size but if I come up a needle size you're going to be able to see the stuffing through my crochet I've tried and you can see the stuffing I do tend to overstuff and my bodies are quite firm compared to the toft dollies but they are smaller than the toft versions as well I did find them quite footery to do um, and what I had to do in the end up I found that you're supposed to do you're supposed to do this big toe and then you were supposed to go on to the, the bobbles for the toes and I just couldn't get my bobbles to sit nice so after many many goes and I'd left it until the next day to my one hour crochet slot the next day and I had a wee think about it and I actually found if I cut the yarn after doing the big toe and I came to this end over here turned my work so I was working the bobbles from the back of my work and I started on the wee toe the smallest toe there and I worked my way up to that that fourth toe there and then I had to cut my yarn again and go back to where I was to continue with the foot I just found it easier to do it that way and as I say it could be me because my crocheting is quite tight but I do like my tension I do like overstuffing my dolls so sometimes you just have to find a way round about these problems don't you her hair is just lots of long loops it's um, big long chains and then you secure it back into the head and you only do these loops all around her hairline and then you're supposed to scoop them all up, put a piece of yarn through all your loops and draw them in together. But I didn't think my loops were going to be long enough. So I scooped up the hair at the back of her neck and I pinned it up. I've secured it up. Just put some yarn through the top of the loops and then secured it kind of like up there under her hair. And then I scooped up the sides and I've joined them actually here, the side pieces. And then the front of her hair, I've scooped all that up separately as well. I haven't secured that bit off because she's supposed to have a little, a little quiff at the front. Um, so when her crown sits on, you can see the, the front of her hair, it kind of sticks out a wee bit in a quiff. But I've not secured that down because I'm not sure if it'll look okay. So I want to, I just want to get her crown on and then I'll secure that bit up there. Because what I'll probably do is where that hair is joined here, I'll probably just loop my, my yarn back through. I'll just take, sorry, I'll just take this yarn through each of those loops up there and just pull it a wee bit tighter just so that joins up and there's no gap. You don't see the top of your head. But I'll get her crown done first and then I'll finish that wee bit off. I've just tucked it in just now so you don't really see it. Oh, sticking up a wee bit. I've spent more time doing this tough doll's hair than I do my own hair. I was actually quite worried about it because you just had all these crazy, crazy loops on her head and she kind of looked like Medusa. Um, and I'm thinking, I don't know how I'm going to style this dolly's hair. I've got a knitting group to go to tomorrow and sometimes there's a, a hairdresser that comes along and I was seriously considering taking this dolly along and saying, how do I style her hair? But then I thought, that's a wee bit cheeky. The hairdresser's there to knit and crochet not to do hair even if it is a dolly here. But I think I've figured it out and I think that looks okay. I just, I think if I pulled it all in the one go, our, our fringe would have been scraped right back and she wouldn't have had that wee quiff at the front. But I'm really pleased with how she's turned out. I'm really pleased I've got her done. I've made some progress on her as well because I've been making so many excuses not to crochet. And I've been trying to think about this over the past couple of weeks. Is it because I'm quite a tight crochet when I do the dolls? And I'm not actually, it's too tight and I'm not enjoying it. Or is it because as a cr crochet doesn't come as naturally to me as knitting and sewing does, I have to think about it. I have to concentrate on it. And I find myself counting every stitch and every round. And I think sometimes when there's a lot of other stuff going on in your head, you tell yourself you don't have, you don't have the headspace to work on crochet when you do actually. See, when you sit down and concentrate on this for an hour, you forget about everything else that's going on. It gives you a wee bit of a break and it's actually really nice just to sit down and do it once you force yourself into doing it. And I know that sounds silly, you force yourself into doing it, but I am really, really enjoying it now that I'm working on it. I have made a wee start on her skirt. She has got an underskirt to go on, she's got an under tunic at the top and then she's got robes to go on as well. And then it's her sandals, her tablet, her torch and her crown. But I did make a wee start on her skirt. I only started this this morning. Am I showing you the right side? Yeah. 
Now what you're meant to do with this skirt is you are supposed to work it and join it onto her body. So when you get up to this end of the piece, you, you slip stitch it onto her body. I'm not going to do that. I just find, again, that's quite um, footery. Um, trying to work the crochet piece and you've got the doll attached to it as well. So I'm just going to make the skirt. And once it's finished, I'll either stitch it onto her body or it will be fully removable. I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to have it permanently on her or it can come off. But I will make it separate. But I did check that it is going to be just the right length because you want to see her feet because she's going to have her sandals on and you want to be able to see her feet once the edging's round the bottom. So that should be okay. So I should have a wee bit more progress in that next time. Hopefully she'll have some clothes on next time you see her. But I'm really pleased with her so far. That is all the crochet I've got to show you today. So let's move on to the patchwork and quilting section. And I finished piecing together my Halloween quilt. Now, I know it's not Halloween. I'm preparing for next Halloween, okay? I'm way, way ahead of the game here. I'm so organised, it's unbelievable. But let me just stand up and I'll show you what I've done so far, okay? So I got all those blocks that I showed you the last time. I got those all pieced together. I made those wee stars as well. Um, and the wee ones underneath the, the bat. And I pieced it all together. Now I did finish it at about 30 inches square, which is just a wee bit smaller than the, the, pattern, the pattern asked us to do. But then I made all these little piano keys. Um, just with the leftover fabric that I had. I just started cutting five by two and a half inch piano keys and I knew they would join together because it was a 30 inch, it was a 30 inch length. I needed something for the corners because I didn't want piano keys in the corners, so I made pinwheels. But I only had enough of this black fabric here. That is the fabric that is in the house. It's just a really dark grey, almost black, um, and it's got a wee sweetie print on it. It's like wee sweeties. And I only had enough fabric to make three pinwheels. But then I remembered that Jaden had some. He had been here and I had been letting him use my sewing machine. I know he's only four, but he, he loves that kind of stuff. I just put the speed right down. It was really, really slow. He didn't have his fingers underneath or anything like that. And I was just giving him scrap pieces of fabric out of the, the wee scrap bin that I had for this. And it was actually wee triangles it was off cuts from doing um from just off cuts from the the half square triangles that I had so he was just sewing those together and I think the bit that he enjoyed the most he was he was using the pedal so he was putting the power in but it was really really slow and as I say he didn't have his fingers anywhere near the needle he actually told me off at one point it was running off it was running squinty and I tried to level the piece of fabrics up just to get them sewn straight Oh, don't put your fingers in there, he told me. So I got a wee telling off. Um, and the bit that he really liked is when you get to the end and I've, I've got the, the scissors where you can cut your thread. He really liked that bit. He could cut the, cut the thread. But I remembered he was away with some of these and uh, I frantically messaged my son and I said, oh, those little bits of sewing that Jaden went home with, has he still got them? And he did, thank goodness, because he'd taken his pieces home to show to his mum and dad. So, And I, I just thought maybe they would end up in a bin, but I've managed to get some of these back. I've got enough to do another two half square triangles from this bit. And the other pieces are all smaller, so I'm going to have to join the black bits together. So I'll just have a couple of... It'll just be wee joins here. It won't be that noticeable. But I will be able to get that last pinwheel done and join it onto the bottom. I've just left enough there that I haven't joined it on so I can attach the pinwheel here and then stitch it onto the bottom. But it was a wee bit of a panic. I could have used the ghost fabric. I was just trying to use as much of this fabric as possible and make the quilt a wee bit bigger. So it's about 40 inch square now, which is 
it's a nicer size for me. And I've used up some of that leftover fabric. The only thing is, I cut all my fabric up into piano keys. What I had left over, the most of it ended up as piano keys. And then it dawned on me that my back piece isn't big enough. And I had thought, I'll just put piano keys on that as well. But then as I was making this bit, I thought, I don't want piano keys just right around the edge of the back piece. So I had to get a wee bit more creative with that. So let me show you what I did with that. So this is my back piece. There was quite a lot of piecing went into making this back piece. I think I spent just as long in the back bit as I did on the front. After deciding that I didn't want piano keys to go right around the edge the way it was at the front, I thought, well, maybe I could run them up and down the middle. Um, but I didn't want just lines of piano keys. So I've tried to put some pieces going across the way and some going up and down. But that meant doing it like that, I was losing a bit of fabric because when you join two pieces, I then had to trim it to a four and a half inch square rather than it being, because it was five inches long, but four and a half wide. So I lost a wee half inch. I did have a wee bit of this fabric here that I was able to cut just the leftovers of that into four and a half inch squares. And same with the ghosts. Oh, it's on this, sorry, it's this side. And I had some, ghosts that I could cut up just to fill in gaps and I have just about used all this fabric. After piecing I had enough to go up and down the middle and right across the centre and then I had this was cut into 15 inch squares I then realised I needed a tiny wee bit top and bottom um, just because I wanted it to be two inches bigger all round than the front of the quilt and I thought, right, I'll just cut some white and I'll put white borders on. I didn't even have enough of the white left over, so I've had to put wee patches in these, in these side pieces because I just didn't have enough white to edge it and make it big enough. But we got there in the end. I think the, <laughs> the amount of headspace, the amount of thinking, the amount of thought that went into putting this together to make this back big enough was, there was more work went into this than there was in the front piece. I did actually consider when I was finished um, just buying two lengths of fabric and making two Halloween quilts because I thought this, that bit there is just as nice as the other piece, isn't it? And I do love these fabrics. This fabric is actually um, spooky and witchy or Spooky and Sweeter. It's from two different ranges from Art Gallery Fabrics. I did put links below the last time so you knew what the ranges were called, but I think I forgot to tell you what they were called. But I just love it. I would really, really like to get this layered up and quilted as soon as I can. Um, I think if I put it away, it might lie for a wee bit and it doesn't get done in time for Halloween next year because I have another one, it's got bats and pumpkins on it and it's from Fat Quarter Shop again. You can download this quilt pattern from Fat Quarter Shop. It is a, it's a free pattern and they also have a cross stitch version if you're interested in cross stitch, so it's worthwhile looking. And I did one two years ago, um, it was Bats and Booze, that one was called and I've still not layered that up and quilted it. So I think what I would really, really like to do is get both of these quilts layered up, quilted and get the binding on them and then put them away for next Halloween. There was two years between these the two quilts that I've made and there was one in the middle that I haven't done, but th there was another free one, as I should say, and I would really like to do that one as well. Um, and probably next year they'll have another Halloween quilt out. So it would be nice to clear the decks and get these ones finished and they're there for next Halloween and it's not lingering any longer. Um, I would like to get them done now. I would like to get them done as soon as I can, even before Advent season, just try and layer up and quilt. But my daughter is moving house. I know she's only just moved out. She only moved out in June, but one of the joys of taking 
renting from a private landlord as they can tell you your, your lease is up at any time. So she had a six months lease and about two months ago, the landlord said, when your lease is up, I won't be renewing it. I need that flat. My son wants to move into it. So they've had to find somewhere else to live. They've managed to find somewhere and she's moving. I think she's moving next week. It's either next week or the week after. So I might not get a lot of quilting done between now and the next episode. But I really would like to get them done as soon as I can. I don't want them still sitting there next year and we all know what I'm like. So that is all the crafty things that I've got to show you today. So the last couple of things that I want to show you are some acquisitions and my Halloween box. The final few skeins from the Halloween box from Beehive Yarns. Now the Halloween box was Wednesday themed and this is the advent calendar. Just pop that card down. Isn't it lovely? So this is number one here going along to number 13 and I think I showed you the first six or seven didn't I already? So you, that was the last few that you still had to see. I love this calendar. I'm so glad that I, that I ordered it. If it's something that you're interested in, Beth has actually opened up a pre-order. So if you feel like you missed out and you would like to get your hands on these mini skeins, you can pop over to Beehive Yarns. She has a pre-order for this open until the 17th of November. You don't get the little extras with it and I don't think she was offering the full skein. I opened these, I started opening these up um, two weeks before Halloween and on Halloween there was a 100 gram skein that I opened and this colourway is called Never, Nevermore Academy Gates. So this goes with the, the calendar. There is a, there's a highlight reel that Beth has and she has some previous countdown boxes for Halloween and she has saved some projects that other people have knitted and there's a cardigan in there called the Lifesaver Cardigan. Oh, I can't remember who does that. Is it Tannis Fibre Arts or is it Tin Can Knits? It was a, it's a, it's a waistline cardigan but somebody had made it using a pale grey, I think it's a pale grey yarn and using a previous advent box from Beth at Beehive Yarns and it's just got the 13 coloured stripes in it and it's lovely, it's really really nice so I think that's what I will eventually get round to making with this whether or not I double it up and use it as double knitting because this is only four ply um, I can't remember what the pattern, I did look at the pattern or the other option that I, that I thought of was the Hohe Locatelli, the long summer cardigan. I was actually looking at that pattern just the other day and I was counting the number of stripes she had on it and I think she's got, it's a pale grey cardigan again and it's a 14 pink stripes on it and I'm thinking, well I've got 13 colours here and I could use a wee bit of this as well. That would work, wouldn't it? I'll just pop this out of the way. I like when you see it on a stick like that all together. It was really funny, I'd actually had that line in my living room on my shelf and it was on Monday, just Monday there, a couple of days ago, I thought, I need to put this, this away, I need to get it packed away and find somewhere to store it because I'm going to have Advents coming soon and I actually just put it onto that stick, sat it in my room so I could show it to you guys and the postman chapped the door. It was my Advent calendar from Beehive Yarns. So there you go, it pays to tidy up sometimes. So the acquisitions that I've got to show you are, I'm going to show you a bag first, okay? Because it matches the calendar. This is a Wednesday themed bag and it's a nice big boxy bottom. And I bought this from Coffee and Yarn Cakes on Etsy. I saw a couple of people had it on social media and I couldn't resist it. I thought that is going to go lovely with my yarn. So what I'm going to do today, now that I've shown it to you, I'm going to pack it all away in this bag and I'm going to save it in there until I'm ready to knit a cardigan with it because I don't think I'm going to do any more blankets. I'm getting a lot of joy out of doing this kind of stuff here. Um, something that I can wear and I can get use out of. So that was my first acquisition. And the next acquisition is actually a Christmas bag. Look at that. How cute is that? Again, a boxy bottom. 
and a drawstring. Now I'm going to keep this for doing my advent socks from the Yarn Badger. I just think that's lovely. It's not, oh, I, I was going to say it's not very, very Christmas themed because it's just trees, but it's not. I think it is actually Christmas trees. There's decorations on them. But this bag was only £10. Can you believe that? It's all padded. It's got the drawstring in it, the boxy bottom, and it's so beautifully made. The little polka dots are running in line. They don't run off. The pattern's not running off. It's just lovely. And it was made by... I make it on Etsy called Handmade by Nana. I'll put links to both of the shops below, but this one's beautifully made as well. It's really nice. I just couldn't believe this one was only £10. I think I was only £12.25, including postage. You feel like you've robbed her. So that one's going to go away. That's going to be for my Christmas knitting. And I've got two Yarnley acquisitions as well. So I have this yarn here it is called solar system is that what it's called our solar system and it's by gauge dye works they are a canadian yarn dyer and i saw this on social media and the way it stripes is it's um you can get a pair of socks or a hat i've got the sock version so it's two identical socks and it's meant to be our solar system all the planets traveling out from the sun I think this dyer is quite mathematically minded and she's actually worked it out so the, the contrast colour that's in between each of the planet stripes it actually maps it out so it is, the, the furthest away planet is quite far away and it's the same if you look at a map of the solar system and I just thought that was lovely and I thought I'm going to, I need to try this so that's probably going to be early next year before I get round to that and my last acquisition is this Look at all those colours in there. And this is the Spring Court box from the Fibre Fox. I didn't order the original box when she released it earlier this year in spring. Once she released all the colourways and she put up a pre-order for it again in August, that's when I ordered it and it came through just last week. But all those pinks and greens and those purples, that's just my colours. Love it. I just really, really like it. I see that she's got the winter coat box went on sale on Wednesday night and it's sold out already. But that's still a mystery. We don't know what the colours are in that. The summer one, I think she's going to be, she might release that as soon as a pre-order. Um, and I know she's got more spring coats going on sale pretty soon. Because um, when she died this second round of it, she died lots of extras. I think it's full size skeins though. And I think that's going in sale soon and I hope she puts the Autumn Court one up as a pre-order because I really like that one. Love. The summer one was nice. It was, if you imagine being on the beach, kind of the browns and beiges and the blue of the water. Um, it was nice. It was nice. But this is more my colours and so is the Autumn one. I had a wee sneak peek of the Autumn one and that was lovely. Um, and the only other acquisitions are my advent calendars. But I'm not going to show you those just now. I'll save those for a future episode. But I'll give you a wee peek into what the, what the themes are. I mentioned this one already. This is from the Yarn Badger. Um, and the theme is Deck the Halls. So this is a 24 stripe advent scheme. It's a sock yarn. And you knit, the idea is to knit a stripe each day. Now she gives you 250 grams um, 250 gram sock skeins plus a 20 gram mini so you will get a pair of socks out of it no bother I bought an extra mini skein last year and I got two pair of socks so I've done the same this year I've got the, the 250 gram sock skeins that are already come separated they're identical for you and I bought the, the mini skein that came with it plus an extra so hopefully I'll get two pair of socks and I want to be knitting in those over ads fence season and have store it in my wee bag the other advent calendar that arrived that I told you about already is my Beehive Yarns advent calendars. Now I've bought two from Beth and the theme is patisserie. It's, um, the colours are based on the film with Kirsten Dunst with the Marie Antoinette. I hadn't seen that for years but I remember loving it when I was younger and I, I found a copy on eBay, a DVD, and I watched it again just recently and I still enjoyed it. So... That's the theme for it. I've got the 20 gram mini skeins and there's one for the 24 days of Advent and also got the full size skein for Christmas Day. 
And then I bought as well, I bought this. She's, she's doing a different advent where it's four 100 gram skeins and you open, is it the, the, the Sundays in advent? I'm not actually sure when that is. I'll need to look that up. So, so I know when to open those. So I've got five 100 gram skeins in total plus the 24 minis. And based on those colours there, I'm just really looking forward to opening it. And both both advents, whether it's the 100 gram ones or whether it's the minis, the 20 gram minis, they all tie together. So I could even maybe get another cardigan or something out of it, couldn't I? And that is all I have to share with you today. So I'm going to say goodbye for now and I'll see you again soon. And I'm going to go off and prance about in my cardigan for a little while in front of the mirror because I'm just so delighted with it, okay? We'll see you soon. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.